Hello everybody and welcome to TechLore. Today we'll be reviewing the e-phone running on the Galaxy S8. Let's go ahead and talk about the hardware. The phone that E sent me to review is the Samsung Galaxy S8, which is their mid-tier phone that they sell to their customers. It houses an 8-core, 10 nanometer processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, and a 3000 milliamp battery with fast charging. The rear camera supports 4K video at 30 FPS, 1080p at 60 FPS, some basic video stabilization, slow-mo, and an okay front-facing camera. The screen, like most Samsung devices, is very nice. It's quad HD with 570 PPI screen density. E-ships refurbished phones, something I admittedly forgot during my unboxing since it felt like a brand new device. After doing some really hard looking, I did find a couple imperfections, equivalent of something that may happen to your brand new phone within its first couple weeks. Not a big deal, refurbished is a win in my book, it saves resources, it's cheaper, and it offers a like new experience, so I don't see an issue with the refurbished side of things. The only major thing missing from the Ease S8 is lack of facial recognition support, which you probably shouldn't be using anyway. Luckily, the fingerprint sensor still works. Overall, it depends who you are, but personally I felt the specs on even this mid-tier option are pretty overkill, but I'm also used to the Pixel 3a XL, which has weaker specs all around, and I find the Pixel to still be overkill. I'm not really a mobile power user. If you want to play games and do things that require some processing power, this phone's hardware likely won't hold you back. But will the software hold you back? The eROM is forked from Lineage OS. They installed MicroG to replace Google Play services, which makes most apps work. They slapped on their own launcher, pre-installed some apps for an out-of-the-box experience, added synchronization support for their e-account, and that's in a nutshell what this phone is. It's essentially a skinned Lineage OS for MicroG. You can read their documentation to read where each app came from. The only thing I'll call out from their pre-installed apps is their notes app requires an e-account with no option for creating local notes. This is horrible for people who don't want an e-account and are now stuck with an unusable notes app. Like, no, that's not cool. Aside from the pre-installed applications, I don't like the launcher, I'm not a fan of the interface, the icons, and I'm especially not a fan of its navigation and iOS-like feel. I much prefer just the plain stock Android launcher. It has more functionality and it makes more sense. This is all just personal taste and you may end up loving this. I particularly did not like the pre-installed app store. It's unclear where these apps are coming from. I don't know who to trust when I'm downloading these apps and where the APKs come from. It's buggy on top of that and I'm not a fan of the interface. I really wish they took the easy route here and just pre-installed F-Droid and Aurora. They're proven to be great and it's what I would use on this device if I were to buy it. I wouldn't even touch the eApp Store and I can't imagine why many people would. Those were my main complaints on the software side. All of which though are easily fixable because Android is just amazing and it will let you change your launcher and install as many app stores as you can find on the internet. And if you don't like their Notes app, just get another Notes app. Making these issues... Not huge deals for people willing to circumvent them, to be frank. I don't think they're huge deals, but um, there's still issues I want to bring up in the review anyway. We need to talk about the E Foundation, because you're not just buying a phone here. You're buying an ecosystem. <coughs> Apple. Well, theoretically, we'll cover this later. The E Foundation obviously offers these pre-flashed, refurbished phones. I personally am not a fan of Samsung, and I'm not sure everybody wants a Fairphone, which is the current alternative. These are their only two options currently, so I wish they had a better selection. Additionally, they only ship to the EU, so you're kind of fresh out of luck unless you get a review unit and you're a YouTuber. Phones aside, they also offer just their ROM that you can install to almost 100 different devices. There's even a simple no commands installation tool that's currently in beta, which is very neat. The next piece of their ecosystem is the e-account. This clearly is aiming to compete with something like the Google Suite. And eh, it kind of does, not really-ish, depends who you are I think. So they use their own configured Nextcloud environment, which is limited to one gigabyte on the free plan. For those who don't know, Nextcloud is an open source, very reputable, private secure cloud storage provider. So it's very good they went with Nextcloud. I am happy about that. This one gigabyte should be enough for maybe your contacts, notes, and calendar entries. That's about it. If you want more storage, 
It sure ain't cheap, especially considering services like Mega offer 50 gigabytes for free, or how Proton and Tutanota offer a better email experience, or how you could host your own Nextcloud environment for a fraction of this cost. Lastly, I want to address the fact that E isn't really creating or developing very much stuff that's new here. They are, for the most part, taking open source projects, refurbished phones, and are trying to create an ecosystem revolving around their own brand. Critics of E see this as almost stealing and deceiving. Personally, I don't see this as malicious. I mean, we're dealing with open source software and they're dealing with refurbished phones. That's part of the deal here. I do think they could be more transparent with how they're not really creating a large amount of this software, like it's kind of implied on their website. But overall, I don't have an issue with it. Just be aware of it because I want you to know that this is not like a huge project that E took on. They, they are a huge project but it's not like they developed this whole ROM from scratch. E is based on Lineage OS, like we said earlier, meaning it has some security issues. Lineage OS uses user debug builds, which adds plenty of additional attack surface, weakens SE Linux policies, and exposes root access via ADB. Lineage OS also requires an unlocked bootloader. In this case, as it's Samsung, no ways to enable OEM locking, which is essential to verify the integrity of the OS. There is no rollback protection, so an attacker can downgrade the OS to an old version and exploit already patched vulnerabilities. These are very specific attacks, and the big picture here is very important. These issues do exist and they should be addressed, but for the majority, the odds of this actually affecting you are relatively slim. But seriously, these are big issues, so keep that in mind when you're putting together your threat model. A side note, keep in mind that Samsung devices do not tend to push security updates to their devices for very long like most Android manufacturers. If you want security updates for a long time, go with a Google device. They're the most secure Android device you can get your hands on. Now that is irony. This sounds bad so far, but as for privacy, things are overall pretty good here. You get a de-Googled experience with almost all open source software. This is an easy way to throw a few hundred bucks at a company and get a phone back that doesn't include a major company tracking you, like Google or Apple. So like most things pertaining to security and privacy, you have to consider your threat model. Personally, I would gladly sacrifice some security for a de-Googled experience if I had to. Luckily, Graphene OS exists, and you can have the best of both worlds on a device that's cheaper and newer than what E offers, with the main disadvantage being the lack of Google Play services and any alternatives like Micro-G which is actually an advantage when we're discussing security. I'll leave a card at the top of the video with a video covering everything you need to know about Graphene OS. It's an amazing project. If you're someone who needs the utmost security, this isn't the phone for you, but for most casual users, you'll be fine assuming you install apps from trusted sources and don't visit malicious sites. On the other hand, privacy on this ROM for all threat models is almost universally a win. So, the ePhone. What are my thoughts on it? This is extremely difficult to talk about because personally, this is never something I would consider buying. I would rather flash a ROM on my own and this is clearly targeted towards a different audience and I'll try to speak for that audience. For a bit of upfront cash, you will receive a phone in the mail that works completely out of the box without a major tech company tracking everything you do. As for the E ecosystem, I appreciate the effort. I see the vision they had with this. It's just the execution that needs some work. At the end of the day, this to me just felt like a skin to Lineage OS from Micro G. I wish it felt like it was more than that, but it just didn't. I have almost this exact setup on my old Nexus 6P, and I actually much prefer Lineage OS from Micro G over the E ROM. However, if you are someone who wants privacy out of the box, have the cash to spend on these phones and some cloud storage, I haven't seen anyone seriously attempt to compete with Apple and Google on all fronts like this before by offering a phone that is set up out of the box with an ecosystem that includes just everything you need. Until I feel that the ecosystem they're trying to build is fully matured, it's hard to justify dishing out the cash for these phones when Graphene OS exists for the Pixel 3a, or you could just replicate the Lineage OS Micro G setup on any phone supported by Lineage, which you could probably find for as little as a hundred bucks. The only people I'd recommend this phone to are the ones who don't want to go through the process of doing this, this whole custom ROM business by yourself. Doesn't want to learn that process and you just want that ecosystem done for you. And those are my final thoughts. It's a good idea with meh execution, in my opinion, some security problems, and a hopeful future, at least I think so. 
That is the review, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of content, make sure to give it a like below and subscribe to our channel for all the future stuff to watch. I also want to thank E for sending over this review test unit and agreeing to a nice unbiased review. So thank you very much. Also, huge shout out to our patrons. It's just been blowing up over there. So come and join our community. Um, I've been posting all my updates throughout my life on there. So if you care about that, then join there. And also we have plenty of good benefits and tiers and yeah, it's just a good place to go. So check it out. Thank you again all for watching and have a lemurish day.